what is surprisingly not scientifically proven. I read a fascinating book a couple of years ago about trying to understanding the purpose of crying, why we do it, what function it serves to the body systems, etc. Apparently we know that different kind of tears to remove something from your eye, or from laughing or from crying, have different chemical makeups, but not why we generate those different kind of tears in the first place. Try figuring out what the frick humor is, that one is even more complicated and all of the theories currently available are unsatisfactory. How general anesthesia works. Doctors have been using general anesthetic for most major surgeries for the last 200 years. It's revolutionized modern surgery and yet we only have some vague theories as to the mechanism of action. Crap's basically fairy dust we inject into people. I'm in pharmacy school and it's surprising how many medications that are out there that we're still not 100% sure why or how it works. But the most surprising that I've come across is Tylenol. We know what it's used for and have theories as to how it works, but from a mechanistic point of view we're not entirely positive. Given the way drug discovery is done for majority of the drugs on the market, I am not surprised. Most companies take the approach of, if it works, it works. It's never been scientifically proven that each human fingerprint is unique, we've just always assumed they were because we've never seen two alike, but if I recall correctly there was a false positive it related to a terrorist attack in Spain. Tylenol. Don't mess with that stuff. We have no idea how diverse life has really been on this planet. The fossil record is so incomplete and biased towards hard tissue that we could be missing over 90% of the actual number of species that have lived on this planet and not even know about it. Look at today too. We discover a new species of life every day and dozens more go extinct. That we can see, every day. Imagine all the life we have missed just today because a species we have not discovered has gone extinct. We really will never truly learn the full diversity of life on Earth, but we can guess about it. Based on just what we see today, Earth is littered with life and will always be until a truly sterilizing event. And that will be a heck of an event. Look up the Permian mass extinction. That was the closest our planet has been while being life bearing. <laughs> Message has never been proven, or even substantially demonstrated, to have negative effects. One researcher proposed a study with a paper. The paper was rejected, and he dropped the idea. But the public caught wind of that paper and decided that message was of the devil. This message is bad for you ranks with is there gluten in this bottled water and I have a healthy immune system. I don't need vaccinations. Sleep. We know what happens when we sleep, and that those things are necessary. But we have no idea why those things can only happen when we're asleep. Sugar does not actually make kids hyperactive, according to science. Please bear in mind I'm just the messenger on that one. If you disagree, please go and yell at the nearest scientist. How to cure hangovers. People have been drinking alcohol for thousands of years and there still isn't a surefire way to quickly get rid of a hangover. Saline IV to the bloodstream. Instant fix. There's still a disagreement about whether math is something we invented to make sense of the world around us. Or our maths are actually innate properties of the universe waiting to be discovered. Would another intelligent species look at their world and come to the exact same conclusions? If mathematical knowledge is really independent of human understanding, is it possible to learn everything there is to know simply by observation? What about abstract concepts like imaginary numbers? It's pretty much impossible to know for sure, so it's the subject of philosophical debate. The benefits of using floss. I still do because my dentist orders me to, but a lot of articles on the web seem to believe that there is very little proof of its efficacy. How tickling works, or why we get wrinkled skin in water. I heard the latter had a theory that it is a remnant of evolution where we have better grip in water. Wrinkled skin is a physiological response so the grip angle is really the only one that makes sense. Astronomer here. Neutron stars are the remnants of giant stars that exploded and are basically balls of neutrons that are the mass of the sun crammed into the size of an average city. We first learned about them 50 years ago this year, when an astronomer named Jocelyn Belburnell started picking up a repeating radio source from outer space several times a second which were called pulsars. A fraction of these neutron stars, it turns out, gives off a beam of radiation from their poles and as they spin, 
as fast as one rotation a millisecond, as slow as once every few seconds, we see that beam sweep past us, sort of like a lighthouse beam sweeping past earth. Jocelyn then famously did not get the Nobel Prize but her supervisor did, most likely because she was a woman. So far what I've said is, as I said, established for half a century. But you know what's weird? These neutron stars are so tiny you could never, ever see it with a normal telescope, but give off this crazy beam of radiation. But we don't know why the radio beam is emitted in the first place, like... We can model a pulsar's pulsing so accurately that they are accurate to nanoseconds over thousands of years more accurate than an atomic clock but beyond probably something to do with its spin and magnetic field. Well, no one knows. Milk doesn't actually do anything special for you. You get most of your calcium from the food you eat. There's nothing to suggest milk helps stimulate bone growth either. It's literally just another beverage. I realize this doesn't really answer the question, but as a biologist, this is something I'd like to clarify because I feel like lots of people don't understand this. Technically in science, most things are not proven. Scientists like to use words such as accepted or rejected, especially when discussing theories. So for example, the theory of gravitation, the theory of evolution, or the germ theory. These are things we accept as facts because studies can be repeated with similar results. This is why the field of science is constantly changing. Cause sooner or later, results may show evidence of new results of a repeated study. Something doesn't become proven per se until it becomes a scientific law. For example, the law of thermodynamics, or Bragg's law. It is always best to approach science with humility. We do not, and probably will never know all of the answers. The mystery of the unknown is part of the reason why science is so fascinating to me. It wasn't until a few years ago that black holes were scientifically proven as we can't see them due to the fact that they trap light. Their existence was proven when a big laser detected a gravitational wave from two massive black holes interacting with each other. Oh hi. Oh hi. I just learned, from an episode of This American Life, that period synchronization, two or more women who spend a lot of time together sync up their periods, was based on a study that nobody else was able to replicate. So, it's referenced a lot in popular culture, and I honestly always thought it was a thing, but just one study showing it seemed true isn't really enough. Most women do not have cycles that are the exact same length, so even if you seem to sync up with someone, it could just be coincidence, basically. It is clearly obvious, but impossible to scientifically prove, that drinking alcohol while pregnant causes fetal alcohol syndrome behavioral issues learning disability, because it would obviously be unethical to split pregnant mothers into two groups, have one group drink liquor and the other group abstain, and then as his outcomes, prospective randomized trial. Not impossible, unethical, maybe. The second law of thermodynamics, it's just assumed to be true, because if it was false it would have insane implications. And because we have never observed a violation of it. Okay, super buried and late to the thread, but every time this comes up I always say it. How bicycles work. We have no explanation for why bicycles don't fall over when in motion. Now is the point when they physics students go, gyroscopic forces from the wheels. Yes. Gyroscopic forces are important to balancing on a bicycle, but tests have been done with special equipment to nullify the gyroscopic forces of the wheels and guess what, the bike still balances itself in motion. Others will say it is because the front wheel and handlebars turn into or out of a fall based on momentum, but just like gyroscopes, this has proven helpful to balance, but not necessary. A bike with its handlebars welded in place will still balance. Finally. The trailing theory where a misalignment of weight helps has been disproved as in all the other cases as the reason a bike will balance. In short, no matter what we take away to make the bike more unstable, in lab conditions, the bike will coast just fine and we have no way to describe why it does that. Should you stay or should you go? Because, anecdotally, if you go there will be trouble, and yet if you stay there will be double. I am not aware that science has proven either proposition. This indecision's killing me. How the first living organisms were formed. Isn't it still we think lightning hit primordial soup yet it can never be recreated in a laboratory. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. 
I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.